Hello and welcome to this edition of GCS Today here on Channel 21, the program that brings you news and information from Gaston County Schools. I'm Todd Hakins. On today's edition, we meet a high school teacher who is a state finalist for a presidential award, and we talk with one of our school nurses about her appointment to a national committee. Joining me on GCS today is Michelle Ellis. She is an earth and environmental science teacher at Hunter Huss High School. Michelle, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Now, Michelle, you have been chosen as one of three state level finalists for a presidential award for excellence in mathematics and science teaching. So first, congratulations on that. It, it, that sounds like a, a wonderful honor. And so you are one of three finalists and a, a state level winner will be chosen. And, and we all hope that it's you. Tell us a little bit about the awards program. Uh, the award started in 1983. It was actually enacted by Congress. And so they're celebrating their 35 years, uh, this go around for this cycle. And it's the highest honor that the government can give specifically to math and science teachers. It focuses on high quality instruction, uh, content knowledge, and student progress and learning. And so you are obviously in the science area, and in the science there's a teacher from Asheville and there's a teacher uh, from Polk County that, that you are competing against. So it's Asheville, Polk County, and Gaston County as the finalist for this award. Um, what, what do you think it means um, for a teacher to have excellence in science? I'm sure that's probably something you thrive, strive for every day in your classroom. So the common thing is, well, the most important thing is our impact on students and not just test scores as far as, but on their learning and the progress that they make. And we're doing pedagogical practices in science that are research-based and we look at data and work with our students and just concentrate on their needs and their hands-on and whatever they need. That's part of it, but also part of it is the leadership that you have to have inside your district and outside of your district. And the things that you are doing in your classroom, are you passing those on? Are you building uh, stronger educators and leaders around the state of North Carolina? And that's what I feel we're, we're doing. So you applied for this award, and I'm, I, I assume there were certain criteria that you have to meet and, and go through that application process to be selected as a finalist. Yes, sir. So the, the application process is what they call a mini national board, and it really is you have to do your videotaping, uh, you have to pick a content, and you have to go through your videotape and answer the questions and reflect on how uh, you responded to them. So as, where is the, why is this important? and where did you show the students where this is important and where did you do the hands-on learning and where did you do the assessment of your students and uh, just a general other things like resume and whatnot. So it's more than just filling out a, a one-page application through the video they are able to be inside your classroom I guess you could say and and have the opportunity to meet you and, and get to know you better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's very important for them to actually see what you're doing. Uh, you can write anything, but when you can put your writing of your standards and excellence that you're doing, and they can see that at the same time, that's what makes it better. Now, you teach earth and environmental science. What is it like inside your classroom? Uh, inside my classroom, day to day, it <laughs> depends on what you're walking in on. Uh, I could be instructing at the board, which is actually very rare. Mainly our students are in groups and working on inquiry-based things. They're given a question, they're given materials, solve this problem, get to where we need to be. I um, mean, sometimes we have this thing called Explore Day, and they're working on anything that they want to in that topic and area. So I could have 12 different things happening in my classroom. So it's unstructured structure. <laughs> right, well, I think that's important because you, you want students engaged. You want them to work together. You want them to be active in a classroom. You don't necessarily want it where the teacher's doing all the talking and the students are just listening. Exactly. Um, all right, some of the topics in earth and environmental science that students love. What, what are ones that they really um, like to focus on? They like ecosystems. Um, they like 
uh, dealing with alternative energies, fossil fuels, and how we fuel um, the world. And I cross that over into global context as well. And we look at other countries and how they handle things in addition to what North Carolina is doing. So I think they like that aspect of, of doing that and seeing around the world. Weather and climate, they're interested in because it's so complex and they really want to know more about that. So that interests them as well. I've always had a fascination with tornadoes and how that works. Uh, do, do you cover that in your class any? We, we touch on it, but it's, it's as a cyclonic storm is how we touch on to it. But we focus more on the hurricanes than okay. the tornadoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And probably earthquakes. Do you get into earthquakes? We do get into earthquakes. They really do like that. I mean, we tried doing a shaking table with uh, jello and marshmallows and then building the structure. So that gets oh. eaten pretty quickly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that experiment doesn't stay around too long. It doesn't. <laughs> now, it, it's very obvious that you love teaching, and I know that you're at the high school level now at Hunter Huss. You also, you've been a middle school teacher. Have, have you taught at the elementary level as well? Mm -hmm. So you've taught at all three levels. Yes. And um, what, what do you see about education that something that you love and that you look forward to, um, something that makes your job just really exciting day from day to day? I like seeing the interest of um, students, uh, and it's actually actually interesting since I've been elementary, middle, and high, seeing some of these kids grow up. So that's a, a little side note that's kind of fun for me. But watching their interest and when they're really engaged in something and when they're asking question after question after question, uh, that's important. That's something like, oh, let's not ask questions, rest of the questions. No, but that's showing me that you want to do something and that you want to learn. And so that's important to answer those. And sometimes for me, it's just I'm learning too because these kids know in certain areas more than I may know. And so they see the process of me learning as well. So it's a, it's a two-way street. How important is science education to preparing students for graduation and beyond graduation? Um, for that, it's very important. And I think sometimes that's hard for uh, to be seen because there's so much focus on reading and math. But science incorporates both of those things. And when I was at Greer, I was a math and science teacher, and I did my, the math I did focused on science and activity that was related to science. So it gets them thinking in a different way. And if we're trying to increase critical thinking and um, independent learning, if we're trying to do those things, science is the way to do that because it gives them that opportunity to actually make an application to what we're doing. And, you know, Johnny can have 20 watermelons but <laughs> and then get 60 more, but when they actually see where they have to do the addition, um, the math part in science, they understand more. And then the research they do in reading. So it all that common core all comes together in science when you look at the pedagogy and the inquiry skills that students need to learn. You don't have subjects that necessarily stand alone. Exactly. They complement one another and, and they're they're integrated um, where if you're in science you're using those math skills technology you're mm -hmm. incorporating the reading and um, that's really important because when a, when a student gets into the uh, business world and into college they've got to be able to um, think I guess you could say maybe across disciplines or across exactly. the curriculum and do you, do you find that that's what your students are doing and and is that something you want to make sure that they're able to to think critically and work together and solve those problems? It is vitally important for them and I when I teach my class I train that way for my students to understand and I go around and I talk to other teachers what are you doing and when I did something with math related come to find out it was something they needed in science as well so I worked a good bit my first year at Hunter Huss with a math teacher and seeing letting the students see how things cross over and they need those skills of collaborating together when you look at what businesses want they want collaboration um, that's a focus for them and those soft skills that are taught in my science class because I focus on that. You're going to need this in real life. And I try to show them that even through some things as simple as a scientific method, how that works and how that relates to real life. And you got to get facts and you can't believe everything on social media. You know, <laughs> investigate <laughs> things for yourself and then see and make your own conclusions. And uh, claims, evidence, and reasoning. And I'm like, if you say something, you have to have some evidence to back that up and then explain how they all tie in together. And that is a, a skill they need, and that's something I teach in science. Okay, I want you to brag on yourself a little bit with this answer. <laughs> what, what makes you the best candidate 
for this presidential award for excellence? Oh wow, brag on myself, um, it's hard. Because uh, I owe so much to so many people that have been supportive to me. Um, so I want to thank them before I start the bragging. <laughs> but I have concentrated a great deal on staying in line with the changes that are happening in curriculum and instruction overall, and specifically into science education. Uh, that is important to me. I've continued my education. I, I've earned my master's in K-8 science, and I'm getting my Ph.D. now uh, in um, global STEM education and I think that not just learning but the fact that I'm putting it into the classroom and distributing that knowledge to my students as well as helping to uh, professional learning for the teachers around me it's like hey look what I learned and being involved in the organization that I've, I've been involved in uh, North Carolina Science Teachers Association National Science Teachers Association so doing all those things and not just being a member but being an active member on committees and roles and and just guiding through well, Michelle, we certainly think you are most deserving of the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. You are one of three finalists statewide for this state-level award um, that will be presented, and we hope that you'll be back with us soon and you can tell us what it's all, what it's like to be the uh, state award winner of this <laughs> award. So good luck to you in the competition, and we appreciate all that you do for our students at Hunter Huss High School and everything that you do for the teaching profession. And we appreciate you being with us today here on GCS Today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You are watching GCS Today here on Channel 21. We will be right back. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you going to do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And unconventional methods, common. I'm a teacher. I make more. Joining me on GCS today is Susan Clark. She is the school nurse at Page Primary and South Point High School and also was the Gaston County School Nurse of the Year in 2016. Congratulations on that award two years ago. and We're glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Todd. I'm glad to be here. Now, you have been appointed to serve on a test committee for the National Board for Certification of School Nurses, and that's a national honor that you have received. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but first tell us what is the National Board for Certification of School Nurses and what does that organization do? Well, the organization basically just provides for certification of school nurses. Um, a process for that. Uh, certification in school nursing is a, is a, sets a national standard for the knowledge and the skills that are necessary for competent practice in the school setting. And it's like a, a professional recognition for expertise in school nursing. And, and it reminds me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it reminds me of the national board certification process for teachers. They have, it is. They have that type of process, so I imagine it's probably very similar to that. Yes, it is. It's a fairly rigorous exam that we have to um, take and pass, <laughs> and then we have to be recertified every five years. Okay, so it is very similar mm -hmm. to the process teachers go through for national right. certification. Now, you mentioned the exam that you have to take. You've been appointed to the committee that is responsible for designing that exam. Right. What do you think about that? I, I know that's, there, that's a, it's a big opportunity, but there's a lot of responsibility. How do, you, how do you feel about taking that on? There is. I'm a little bit unsure about it, um, but I'm excited. I know that I'll be working with other nationally certified school nurses throughout the country, and they tell us that what we'll be doing is reviewing results of a survey that was designed to determine the the knowledge and the skills that school nurses need and then those results will be translated into test specifications for the national exam. So you're going to spend time this summer 
with other school nurses on this project. And it yes. takes place in Colorado? Denver, Colorado. It's actually in May, the latter okay, part in of May. May. Mm -hmm. All right. And and you will be together reviewing the exams. Why, why do you think this is an important process? Well, I think that the exam has to reflect the most current standards of practice for school nursing. So I think it goes through this process every few years of, of updating and, and just making sure that everything's current. Now, how, how were you selected? Did you apply? Were you nominated? Um, I applied for it. They sent out an email blast to other, to I guess all nationally certified school nurses and I just applied for it. I served on one of their other committees this past year um, and that involved just like conference calls and we were reviewing certain test questions that um, that performed outside the parameters on the exam and we had to decide whether they were good questions and they needed to be left in the pool or if they needed to be thrown out or if they just needed to be sent back for maybe review and revision. Now, when designing those questions, are you going to make sure that those questions are as hard as they can be? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how some nurses look at it, but I think every once in a while there should be an easy one thrown in there. I think it makes you feel better about the whole test taking process. You've got to have a good balance, right? That's so right. if there's one that you're not so sure of, maybe you can do really well on, on this that's other right, question. That's right, and feel good about it. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure that the nurses taking the exam will, will appreciate that mm -hmm. philosophy coming into it. In your role as a school nurse, what do you love about your job? Well, as a school nurse, I have the opportunity to interact and hopefully make a positive influence on my students and, um, and their families. Um, I love being able to help them with their their medical well-being so that they can function better in the classroom and be more successful in the classroom. Now all of our schools in Gaston County are served by a school nurse That's and correct. some nurses are assigned to two schools based on the size of the school and the number of students. So right. you're, at, you're at two schools. Mm -hmm. um, why is it so important to have that school nurse present for, for students? Well the school nurse is the health expert in the schools. Um, in Gaston County Schools, all school nurses are required to be nationally certified, so that gives us the expertise that we need to be able to um, hopefully ensure that our students are healthy and ready to learn. Um, we're also up to date on the most current laws and recommendations involving school health, and so we're instrumental in getting those implemented in our schools as well. So you say that all of our nurses are nationally certified. So we, nurses in Gaston, they have completed We're a test like the one that you're going to be putting notch. together. Yes. <laughs> we have the expertise, we do. That's great, that is great to know. And I think, I think parents in the community would appreciate knowing that, mm -hmm. that, that the, our school nurses, they are top notch and they are uh, top of their game in, mm -hmm. in, in this profession because it, it is an important profession because when children come to school, and I think you would agree with this, it's not just about what you do in the classroom. There are so many other needs right. that, that have to be met with students and, and nurses play an important role with that. Right, that's right. And many students come to us as soon as they get off the bus in the morning, they're at our door. You know, with, for some reason or another. And I imagine you probably serve some students that you are the health professional in, in that student's life. That's um, right. And so, so it is a big responsibility for you and for our other school nurses. Mm -hmm. Many parents will just say, well, go see the school nurse when you get to school. Mm -hmm. Have the school nurse check you out. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you love about what you do? Well, as I said, I love being able to um, to help the kids with their their medical wellness. You know, helping them be able to be more successful in the classroom. Um, Did you always want to be a school nurse? Did you know that this is where you would be? Well, I always wanted to be in the medical profession. Um, it wasn't until I got into college that I decided on nursing. And I actually worked at Carolina's healthcare system for about 16 years prior to coming to Gaston County Schools. So I've been here about 17 years, okay. and, and I do love school nursing.
And I know you told me that you're now at South Point at Page Primary, but you had also, you previously have served at Gardner Park and at Holbrook Middle School. Right. Um, so you, you've been at a number of our schools uh, across the, mm -hmm. the county. Okay, right now I know that school nurses are dealing with the flu. We've mm -hmm. had a, a tough a situation with the flu this year. Yeah. Um, can you offer just a few reminders to parents and to students, maybe some preventative tips to help mm -hmm. uh, with the flu? Well, according to the CDC, it is still quite widespread throughout the country. They are still recommending that you get a flu shot if you haven't had one. And of course, frequent hand washing and covering your coughs and sneezes helps to prevent the spread. But also, just getting enough rest and good nutrition and exercise helps to keep your immune system strong during the flu season. So hopefully that will help you fight it off or make it so that you don't have such a severe bout with it. And I think that um, in any case, I think it's important. You can't, a school nurse can't say it enough. Wash your hands, wash your, wash hands. your hands. How often do you say that a day? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan, we, we congratulate you on your selection for the serving on the test committee this year for Thank the you. National Board for Certification of School Nurses. It's a big responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, and we're glad to have you at the table um, representing school nurses, not just from Gaston County, but from North Carolina and mm -hmm. across the country. So congratulations on this honor. Thank you. I appreciate you allowing me to be here. And we certainly appreciate Susan Clark, the school nurse at Page Primary and South Point High School, mm -hmm. for being with us here on GCS Today. Thank you. Thank you for watching GCS Today. Stay tuned to Channel 21 for the latest school news and information. We look forward to seeing you next time.